Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I am your host, Derek Show, and I have with me two co-hosts. Double. Dos. That's Curtis, and that's Jennifer. If you get them mixed up, you're doing this Shame wrong. Shame on you. Whoosh, See, that I didn't have to look. Uh, <laughs> Stop fingering me. Uh, mm, mm. Mm. So, this is the result. I don't know when this is going to go out before the end of everything else, before the beginning of everything else. It's usually Saturday, isn't it? Saturday or Monday. Yeah, but when I say Saturday, then I get lazy, and it comes out on Monday. <laughs> and if I say Saturday, I feel obligated. So it's either Saturday or Monday, or whenever I get the chance. Whenever he feels like it. Okay, Andy? just right. real, real question. A fake question. Was this harder than the tequila? My, my tongue's still kind of burning. Yeah, so is mine. Um, harder? I don't know. I don't think so. It was, no, I, th I think the tequila burned me a little more. Like, burned me down a little bit. I think I learned more from this one. Yeah, I, I feel like I there's more flavors. I think there's a this lot of gin without smell. Oh, yes. yeah, lots. So, so, here's the deal. You could go to Ustream. Search for everyday drinkers. You can watch the whole thing, including the math fiasco and all the stuff that goes along with it. <laughs> the math fiasco. Um, we tasted. <laughs> we tasted 24 different gins. 27. We tasted 27 <laughs> different gins. There's the math. <laughs> and it's these, hard to do math when you're not drunk. drunk. <laughs> not drunk. We're yeah. sober. Four top finalists. The fifth right here <laughs> would be Martin Miller. But we ran out of Martin Miller, and we had four in the tequila one, so it seemed fair to do. Dog would be so sad because his Bombay. There's there. no Bombay. No, Bombay didn't make it. We had people who sent in gins, and they didn't all make it. But they, that doesn't mean they're all bad. They're just different, and not as good as apparently our top four. Yep. Not as good as New Amsterdam. So I just really. You know, I don't have I think the pricing. These top four definitely. Yeah, I don't have the complete pricing for these. You may have them better than me. This is the only one that I. I know neither of us may have. If the chat room wants to search for New Amsterdam, you may be able to find our drink up New York. You may be Before able to it posts, them. I'll give you the pricing for all of them. Yeah, and then I can I can put them in their bottom thing. Yeah. Um, but the four finalists, in order of least to the number one. Yeah, that's fine. Is this way? This is number St. George Rye. St. George Rye. I don't even know what that means. Rye? Gin. Right. So is gin. it gin made from rye? Yes. Is that different than everything else? Uh, like, should it give you a different flavor different because it's got rye in there? Botanicals. You're going to read Maybe. it for me? Come on. That's not oh, It's a dry gin, but it's called the dry rye. Okay. Uh, also to notice is this is dry gin. Dry gin. I don't know what that is. But this is not. It's an American. So this is um, an American also. Oh, American represents number one and two. You don't know where the Let Berkshires are? I think no. Bombay. I, I don't even know what it says. Oh, Berkshire. Is that what that's It's made in the Berkshires. I just remember it was called Ethereal Gin. Or Ethereal, or how do you say that? Ethereal. Ethereal, that's how I say it. Yeah, Bombay did pretty bad. Bombay did bad. What? It was a 19 out of, let's see, there was a 15, a 14, another 15. So it's in the lower end. It's in the lower end. But there were a lot of in the in the 15, in the teen range. So it's not, I mean, it, it wasn't. It no, didn't bomb, most of them are in the 20 never mind. range. It was, it was bad. Yeah. Um, so you got the St. George, then you got... I was gonna say Saint Hendrix, <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix, Hendrix Gin. Saint Hendrix, I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. These two passed this uh, tie. Tie. It's very similar to the tequila thing. We had a yep. tie for the, that place, and then we had the New Amsterdam, which I think blew everybody's mind. And I guessed it in the blind tasting. Yeah. Oh, actually, out of the four, two of them we could we we, we did a prediction on if we could get the name. Well, you right. changed. You had this one as something else. I moved you changed it. it yeah, because I, did mine. Cause I was like, oh, it's Sprite. This is the one. And all of a sudden. Later we hit one. I'm like, whoa, that's the sweet yeah. sprite that we were thinking of. So I moved it, but before we had the answers. Yes, Still before good. we had the answers. This one's a little easier because the cucumber notes. Yep. This one I've never had before. It was this was like a, a clear winner, right? There wasn't it wasn't like close. No, no it was close. Oh, Forty what? and thirty nine. Oh. oh, that's pretty close. Yeah. Do we have decimal points? Ah, there could have been. I chopped off the. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I never had that before, and it won. So that's weird. Yep. Everything else in the tequila one I've had had. And this is a micro distillery. Everything micro. else, oh, that that's digit. micro. These no, two are micros, and these two are industrials. Yeah. Yes, and New Amsterdam is probably the cheapest out of all of them. I mean, this is a huge bottle, and I probably paid 18 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I would um, guess that. Yeah. So, all right. so ready? what do we do? Just we're going <laughs> to drink. Wait, these don't drink. have anything in them. Oh, they're just this is the St. George. You lightened them up. Yeah. They're very light. We well, don't have a spit. We don't have to do the spit. Oh, we're just going to drink it. drinking it. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I guess I have no choice. Oh, it has a smell. Oh. These all should have smells then, right? That yeah. is gonna be that rye smell then, because this is. is the one that yeah. I had. That now that I like know what it is, it's yeah. totally rye. Yeah. Yeah. It's that grain, like that. It's it's like it reminds me of 
um, some vodka whiskey combo type thing. No, the moonshine. That's what it reminds me. Yeah. The uh, the white lightning. You know, if you do that for all of them, you're gonna be gone. You just drank the whole thing. Sorry. <laughs> it's got organic grassy notes or something to it too. It's very micro. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It burns. This is the Hendrix. My heart. <laughs> I, I need. Uh, uh. What? All right. The essence of cucumber, but it's very vague. It's the taste. Yeah, the taste is what won this one out. Otherwise, I think the nose would have caused it some harm because it's not as yeah, aromatic. The nose. Some of the other ones had lots of aroma in hollow mid palate, mm -hmm. and and some of them had a really fast finish. In That's and good. let me tell you, he doesn't like to finish. This is the New Amsterdam. This is the orange citrus one. Yeah. The, yeah. And this one smells it. But both of these, neither of these are huge on juniper. No. None of mm -hmm. these are. None of them are. No. That's, that's freaking weird. Not really, because I don't think any of us are super huge on juniper. No, but well, I'm getting it now, like way in the late third quarter. Yeah. But not right away. I'm starving. I really could use some In-N-Out burger. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like New Amsterdam. I like it too. It I smells like Dude, I can only imagine what a martini with New Amsterdam oh, would taste yeah. like. Mm hmm. Topped with Sprite. But it's very American. I mean, if you're not into American gin, yes, it's you'd be so like, cool. no. It's. Who's the parent company? Um, it's that wine company, I think. The Amp New Amsterdam gin was, gin was was on. What's the Echo Demani? It was taped to the Echo Demani, I think, wasn't it? I don't remember. I don't even know who their parent company is. It's all like inbred. Know. Who knows who's uh -huh. who? Um, but there, yeah, I think they're definitely the parent company. I thought it said Anheuser Busch, but no. <laughs> it's says New Amsterdam, which is funny because isn't Amsterdam New York? New Amsterdam. And wait a minute. Yes, there's freaking New York. Uh, what do you call it? Thing Empire State Building Skyline. in the background. Yeah. And it's made in Modesto, California. <laughs> so whatever. Whatever makes them happy. Yeah. Blended and bottled. This so one. This one has a smell. This has the best aroma out of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what helped it too. Um, it brings that aroma of juniper. Definitely. I don't know as necessarily. It, it, there were a couple in there that had very striking orange peel notes. This one has more juniper. This one kind of almost smells classic. You don't agree? Mm hmm. Come on, Curd. <laughs> This has much, much more juniper taste to it, too. No, I think out of all of them, this is probably the most traditional. Yeah. Out of the top four. Yeah. It's traditional, but it's not over the top. No. This has nice juniper. It has a little bit of orange back end flavor and juniper front end. Like, it, it kind of goes rolls with juniper, and there's almost like this hidden orange, uh, fleshy orange under it. But yet... It, it also kind of brings in some of the grain properties. I feel like I could taste some of the distillate in there along with the botanicals and all the loveliness that goes into making a cocktail or straight spirit. And you can buy this around here? Uh, it's a little tough. That one's a tough one. The gray lock is easier to find. Why is this one so tough? Because it's so small? No, that's um, Mar oh, it's a specialty batch. <gasps> oh, specialty because like it. it's the good one? Yeah. Well, it's it, they're all good. It's more... Um... More juniper, more straight gin. Maybe that's what makes it their specialty batch. Ones. They were going for the juniper strike. Okay, so. But still good. New person comes in. They want to buy a gin. New Amsterdam? Yeah. Because and well, what about depends the Hendrix? what they like. I think New Amsterdam. Because Which one do you, find, do you think would be easier to find, Hendrix or New Amsterdam? I don't think you have a problem finding either. Yeah, I don't at, think you'd have a problem. Unless, I've seen this at bars, but if you're at a bar, you're going to find this. Yeah. Almost 190% of the time. By almost 190, I mean like maybe 187. Bombay will be there. That's the issue. You're gonna have Bombay. If you have options, it's gonna be Bombay, Hendrix, Tangare will always be there. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe Martin Miller, maybe New Amsterdam. It depends on where you go. If you're on a more high class establishment, I think you'll see more selection. Not so necessarily mean these will be here. I think for somebody new introduction to gin, like hey, I wanna, I wanna, I'm. I've tasted gin and I didn't like it, but I want to try it again. 
I was really surprised with New Amsterdam. I think yes. that's a good start because this gives you some gin taste, but I think at the same time, it's a little bit different, and people who have a hard time approaching gin will have a better time approaching this. This is like your gateway gin. Yeah, but I think number one, if you've tried gin, but you don't really like it, number one, it, granted it's hard to get, but That's number one would be a good in reintroduction because it's juniper, it's gin, but it's not over junipered. <laughs> It's not over junipered. That's like it's the key. A, it's the right amount of juniper, and it right. tastes. And I don't even. I'm not a huge juniper fan, but I actually I like that. And right, same here. Like, and I could drink any of these. I think Hendrix is probably the more smooth. I think yeah. the only problem I have with New Hamsterdam is, is it might be New Hamsterdam. Um, New, New might, Hamster. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be a little new age for like if if a if a cocktail if a gin enthusiast or any of those people. Right. Watch this video and they're like, I love gin, favorite, my favorite thing on the planet. I'd be worried recommending this to them because I feel like I they would come back and say, it doesn't even taste but what like about gin. the BMD? That's this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That tastes like gin. No, I don't think that they're a problem with that. I think Hendrix, they've already had, right? So that's, that's kind of out there. So yeah, BM but remember it tells of the cocktail that um, guy we had asked, he was a gin guy, I thought, and... He was pretty much dissing a lot of gins, and yeah. we were like, oh, what about New Amsterdam? And he's like, actually, that's a really good gin. <laughs> I think it's more of a sleeper gin, because most people don't look at that gin and go, oh, that's good. First off, I, it's cheap. I, yeah, I look at it as like the, the, brand, the, the brand that just is a brand to make up some space on the shelf. Like, I don't look at that and go, oh, that's, that's one of the best ones. I don't look at it as, it's like over-marketed. And I, I kind of find like a major brand that they're just putting something out there to put it out there. But at the same time, it turns out to be a good product. It's kind of like, it reminds me, this is the closest thing in, in a tequila world. I would say Cabo Abo, where it's kind of the celebrity status. I think that's where this is going. But at the same time, it's not just, hey, let's throw a celebrity here. Ding! And now it's a good gin. Yeah. I think by itself, if you drink it standalone, it turns out that way. I agree. Uh, but the fail safe, always Hendrix. It's always everywhere. Yeah, I know yeah, some critics good. that uh, that have that watch our show would say the problem with this is because of all those intense cucumber notes, it may detract for, or change the cocktail in a different way because of the cucumber. It could, it but, could. It, I, but I can look at this and go, subtle. "This is going to change the cocktail in the way yeah, it would. towards the orange." This and that's one why I, think I use it. it neutral, <laughs> right? Like if I'm looking at a cocktail and it's sweet and it has gin in it, it's like New Amsterdam. Right. She will always pick this 150, yeah. 187 percent of the time. Yes. That's it. Top four out of well, picture Martin Miller here because <laughs> yep. these two are tied. That's true. Yeah, but this is how we did it for the tequila right, tasting. Yeah. I'm happy with this. Done. Done. We're done. We did it. That is your gin tasting. Now these are the, are the ones to seek out. A question of the day. Oh. Have you had any of these? There you go. Yeah. Have you and had which these one do you like? Right. Yep. And, I'm and you probably right haven't had that. <laughs> no. But it, I liked that. I thought that was really good. Google ethereal gin and start looking for it. It's it's like the cool swan of Irish creams. It's there something you, you now have to look for. I, I honestly think it's on Drink Up. Really? I think so. Could be. If it's on Drink Up New York, then you should go there and get it because they were they're the closest to that distillery, so they would probably be the first I to think really have it. Search it. Find it. I know if people are our fans that go out there and they buy stuff when they need or special order at your place. If you start demanding it, I think then that will become a growing Yeah, and thing. Chris from Berkshire Mountain Distilling is awesome. I don't know Chris, but thank you, Chris, for changing things up. We're My teaching brain. you how to gin. Oh! We're teaching you how to gin! <laughs> All right. Yes. I lose. Fine, I'll sit here. <laughs>